Hello and welcome to Cloud Learner's Journey Part 4 of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Questions and Answers with Explanation and References which you can find in the description. So let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our Cloud Learner's Journey YouTube channel to help you pass the AZ104 exam and become an Azure Administrator Associate. Question 1. Your company has an Azure Active Directory tenant that is configured for hybrid coexistence with the on-premises Active Directory domain. You plan to deploy several new virtual machines in Azure. The VMs will have the same operating system and custom software requirements. You configure a reference VM in the on-premise virtual environment. You then generalize the VM to create an image. You need to upload the image to Azure to ensure that it is available for selection when you create the new Azure VMs. Which PowerShell commanders should you use? And the options are A. Add AZVM, B. Add AZVHD, C. Add AZ Image, D. Add AZ Image Data Disk. And the correct option is B. Add AZVHD. Add AZVHD command that uploads on premises virtual hard disk in .vhd file format to a blob storage account as fixed virtual hard disks. Next, question number two. You create an Azure storage account. You plan to add 10 blob containers to the storage account. For one of the containers, you need to use a different key to encrypt data at rest. What should you do before you create the container? Generate a shared access signature. B. Modify the minimum TLS version. C. Rotate the access keys. D. Create an encryption scope. And the option is create an encryption scope. Encryption scope enables you to manage encryption with the key that is scoped to a container or an individual block. You can use encryption scopes to create secure boundaries between data that resides in the same storage account but belongs to different customers. Next, question number three. You have an Azure subscription. In the Azure portal, you plan to create a storage account named Storage1 that will have the following settings. Performance, Standard, Replication, Geo, Redundant Storage, ZRS, Access Tier, Default, which is cool, Hierarchical Namespace, Disabled. You need to ensure that you can set account kind for Storage1 to Block Blob Storage. Which settings should you modify first? And the options are A. Performance, B. Replication, C. Access Tier, default D hierarchical namespace and the correct option is a performance standard performance for general purpose v2 storage accounts is selected by default this type of account is recommended by Microsoft for most scenarios select premium for scenarios requiring low latency after selecting premium select the type of premium storage account to create which can be block blobs file shares or page blobs Next, question number four. You have an on-premises server that contains a folder named D folder one. You need to copy the contents of D folder one to the public container in an Azure storage account named Contestor Data. Which command should you run? And the options are A, HTTPS, colon, forward slash, forward slash, Contestor Data dot blob dot code dot windows dot net, forward slash public. And you see the other options B, C, and D. And the correct option is C. AZ copy command copies a directory and all of the files in the directory to a blob container. The result is a directory in the container by the same name. Next, question number five. You have an Azure virtual machine named VM1 that runs Windows Server 2016. You need to create an alert in Azure when more than two error events are logged to the system event log on VM1 within an hour. And the solution is, you create an Azure storage account and configure shared access signatures. You install the Microsoft monitoring agent on VM1. You create an alert in Azure monitor and specify the storage account as the source. Does that meet the goal? And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct answer is B, no. You create an Azure Log Analytics workspace and configure the data settings. 
You install the Microsoft Monitor agent on VM1. You create an alert in Azure Monitor and specify the log analytics workspace as the source. Next, question number six. You deploy an Azure Kubernetes service cluster named AKS1. You need to deploy a YAML file to AKS1. Here the solution is from Azure CLI, you run AZ copy. Does this meet the goal? And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct option is B, no. To deploy the YAML file, you need to run with Kubernetes command line client, which is kubectl. kubectl is already installed if you use Azure Cloud Shell. And the command line is kubectl apply f path of the file name. Next, question number seven. You deploy an Azure Kubernetes service, AKS, cluster named AKS1. You need to deploy a YAML file to AKS1. Here the solution is, from Azure CLIC, you run AZ AKS. It's the same question, but the different solution. And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct answer is B, no. As we discussed earlier, to deploy the YAML file, you need to run with Kubernetes command line. Next, question number eight. It's the same question, but the different solution. From Azure CLI, you run the kubectl client. And the options are A, yes, B, no. Correct answer is A, yes. As discussed, kubectl command line is required. Next, question number nine. Your company has an Azure subscription that includes a number of Azure virtual machines, which are all part of the same virtual network. Your company also has an on-premises Hyper-V server that hosts a VM named VM1, which must be replicated to Azure. Which of the following objects that must be created to achieve this goal? Answer by dragging the correct option from the list to the answer area. And the options we see here, and the correct answer is Hyper-V site, and then Azure Recovery Service Vault, and then Replication Policy. So for Hyper-V server, uh, first we need a Hyper-V site, and then Azure Recovery Service Vault, and then the Replication Policy. If the question is for physical servers, then it is Storage Account, Azure Recovery Service Vault, and then Replication Policy. Next, question number 10. Your company's Azure subscription includes Azure Virtual Machines that run Windows Server 2016. One of the VMs is backed up every day using Azure Backup Instant Restore. When the VM becomes infected with data encrypting ransomware, you are required to restore the VM. Which of the following actions should you take? And the options are, you should restore the VM after deleting the infected VM. B, you should restore the VM to any VM within the company's subscription. C, you should restore the VM to a new Azure VM. D, you should restore the VM to an on-premise Windows device. And the correct option is, you should restore the VM to a new Azure VM. If the VM becomes infected with ransomware, you should restore the VM to a new Azure VM. This will ensure that the infected VM is not restored and that you are able to start with a clean VM. You can use Azure Backup to restore the VM's file to the new VM, which will allow you to recover the files without having to worry about the ransomware. And the other incorrect answers are, if you delete the VM, you cannot recover to that VM, it must exist. B, you do not know the other VMs as it works only for the same operating system as the original VM. For the option D, you can recover from the backup. Next, question number 11. You have an Azure subscription that is linked to an Azure AD tenant. The tenant contains the custom role-based access control roles shown in the following table. So it has the name, and the description role 1 and role 2 respectively from the azure portal you need to create two custom roles named role 3 and role 4 role 3 will be an azure subscription role and role 4 will be an azure id role which roles can you clone to create the new roles to answer select the appropriate options in the answer area and we see the answer area and there are options for role 3 and role 4 and the correct option for role 3 is Role 1, Role 2, built-in Azure subscription roles and built-in Azure AD roles. And for the Role 4, option is Role 1, Role 2, built-in Azure AD roles and built-in Azure subscription roles. It should be all in both roles. There are three ways that you can start to create a custom role. You can clone an existing role, start from scratch or 
Start with the JSON file. The easiest way is to find an existing role that has most of the permissions you need and then clone and modify it for your scenario. Next question number 12. You have an Azure subscription. You create the Azure storage account shown in the following exhibit. And here we see the uh, exhibit for the storage account. Subscription, subscription one, the resource group, RG1 and the location, Europe, North Europe. Storage account name, storage 16852. And you see the other following information. Use the drop down menus to select the answer choice that completes each statement based on the information presented in the graphic. Here we see the answer area. The minimum number of copies of the storage account will be 3. Locally redundant storage provides high durable and available storage within a single location, which is a sub region. It will have three copies in the same region. This ensures that we can recover from common failures like disk, node, or a rack without impacting your storage account's availability and durability. And for the second answer area, to reduce the cost of infrequently accessed data in the storage account, you must modify the access tier default setting. Change the access tier from hot to cool. Azure Storage offers different access tiers which allow you to store blob object data in the most cost effective manner. The available access tiers include hot which is optimized for storing data that is accessed frequently, cool optimized for storing data that is infrequently accessed and stored for at least 30 days, archive optimized for storing data that is rarely accessed and stored for at least 180 days with flexible latency requirements. Next question number 13. You have an Azure subscription that contains the resource shown in the following table. You see the uh, following table with name, type, resource group and the location. And we have the names RG1, RG2, VM, SS1, Proximity1, Proximity2, Proximity3 respectively along with the type, resource group and the locations. You need to configure a proximity placement group for VM, SS1 which is a virtual machine scale set. Which proximity placement groups should you use? And the options are A. Proximity 2 only B. Proximity 1, Proximity 2 and Proximity 3 C. Proximity 1 only D. Proximity 1 and Proximity 3 only And the option is A. Proximity 2 only Resource group location for VM SS1 is the RG2 location which is West US only proximity to which also in RG2 is location in West US. So the correct answer is proximity to. Next question number 14. You have Azure subscription named subscription 1 and subscription 2. Subscription 1 has following resource groups. It has the resource groups RG1 and RG2 with the same region West Europe and the lock type for RG1 is none and for the lock type uh, to RG2 is read only. RG1 includes a web app named App1 in the West Europe location. Subscription to contains the following resource groups RG3 and RG4. RG3 with the region East Europe and the lock type is delete, and RG4 with region Central US and the lock type is none. For each of the following statements, select yes if the statement is true, otherwise, select no. Here we see the answer area. App1 can be moved to option is yes. And the second statement, App1 can be moved to RG3, yes. App1 can be moved to RG4 and the option is yes. Locks are designed for any update or removal. In this case, we want to move only. We are not deleting and we are not changing anything in the resource. For this reason, all of them are yes. Next, question number 15. You have an Azure subscription named subscription 1. You have 5 TB of data that you need to transfer to subscription 1. You plan to use an Azure import export job. What can you use as the destination of the imported data? And the options are A. Azure File Storage B. An Azure Cosmos DB Database C. Azure Data Factory D. Azure SQL Database And the correct option is A. Azure File Storage Azure Import Export Service is used to securely import large amounts of data to Azure Blob Storage and Azure Files by shipping disk drives to an Azure Data Center. Here we end with part 4. Thank you for watching part 4 of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Questions and Answers. We hope you found it informative and helpful. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel and comment for more related topics. We look forward to continuing the journey with you in next videos. Thank you.